Hello and welcome to this After Effects certification preparation series of videos. I'm Luisa Winters. In this video, I'd like to cover Objective 1.4a. So this is to demonstrate knowledge of digital video and audio terminology. So I'm going to go through the key terms and definitions so that you can properly answer these questions in case they appear on the test. Let's get to it. Frame rate. Frame rate is the frequency at which consecutive images are captured or displayed. Okay, so this is how it works. Video per se, uh, moving images and all of that, they don't really exist. All the technology that we have is the capability of taking stills and then playing them at a certain rate, right? Um, frames per second, right? And that gives the illusion of movement because our mind connects these images. So that's what a frame rate is. Uh, you can have frame rates that are 24 frames per second, which is film, 25 frames per second, which would be PAL, which is what's used in Europe, um, 30 frames per second, or almost 30 frames per second, which is what we use here in the United States, which is called NTSC. So just knowing the concept that frames per second exist and why they're there is super important uh, for answering any questions related to this on the test. All right, moving on, we have the title action safe zones or areas. You know, this is becoming less and less important as years go by and we change how we're consuming the media, but it's still relevant. This has to do with overscanned. Oh, what all that this means is that there are some monitors that show more pixels than others, right? And if you want to make sure that everything that is important in your video, say text, logos, etc., show up in everybody's monitor, then you need to stay within the safe action and title uh, zones. And you see the action and title safe areas in here. Those are those two rectangles. The outside rectangle is going to mean the safe action uh, area, and the inside one is the safe text area. Image and video resolution. I have a problem with these words. You know, Resolution doesn't really exist in video because resolution is a term that implies pixels per inch or dots per inch. So it's really more a print term than anything else. I prefer the term frame size, which is how many pixels you have across by how many pixels you have down, not resolution. Having said that, it's a losing battle for me because everybody calls it resolution. So a resolution of 1920 by 1080, right? That would be HD or uh, 4K, et cetera, et cetera. So the resolution is defined as the area of an image's pixels. In After Effects, you set this frame size. I'm going to call it how I like it. Frame size is really width times height. So 1920 by 1080. And you see it displayed in this uh, graphic uh, very, very easy. Moving on, pixels. So a pixel would be considered like the molecule of the image. When you put all the pixels together, right, then you, you see the image. That's what we're counting when we talk about frame size or resolution, right? So 1920 by 1080, what? Pixels. So it's the smallest part in which you can divide the image. Pixels are single color. You cannot have a pixel that is two colors, which is why the more pixels you have, the more different colors you can represent, and the image is considered to be better. So they say, hey, a high-resolution image is better than a low-resolution image, and that's very subjective, right? Because a high-resolution image only has more pixels. All right, moving on, rendering. Rendering or image synthesis is the process of generating a photorealistic or non-photorealistic image from a 2D or 3D model by means of a computer program. So the resulting image here is going to be called the render, like you render a 3D model, right? You can see it. All right, moving on, let's talk about rendering as in, hey, let me export this video. 
And in here you see a picture of the export settings from uh, Adobe Media Encoder, uh, from Premiere Pro, and therefore uh, After Effects uses as well. And uh, you can use this to render your image out. So for example, you can render something so that you don't need After Effects to watch it. You can render something so you don't need Premiere Pro to watch it. So that's, uh, it, it can play on its own. Then you render it into a movie, a separate movie. All right, moving on, let's talk about monitoring audio. Monitoring is a term used in audio production that refers to listening and analyzing the musical and technical aspects of the sound being created. That's all. Monitoring audio. I'm listening to the audio. Now let's move on to 1.4b. This is objective 1.4b. Demonstrate knowledge of how color is represented in digital video. So we're going to talk about, you know, white balance, bit depth, working color spaces, so RGB, CMYK, that sort of thing. And we're also going to talk about choosing the right color space. All right, let's get to it. White balance. Most of us know what white balance is. Our eyes get accustomed to the different color lights very, very easily, but cameras are not that smart. So basically, you tell the camera, hey, this is white, and then all of the other colors get adjusted automatically. You can also do a white balance by color temperature. You know, like right now in my studio, the color temperature that I have my white balance set at is 4200 degrees Kelvin or 4200 K. And that is a little bit on the cooler side of things, but that's okay because that's how my lights are. So white balance can be done in, in post as well. You, uh, you could take a little eyedropper, click on something that is white, and all of the other colors get adjusted automatically. All right, moving on, bit depth is the number of bits used to represent each pixel in an image. Most of the time, we work in eight bits per channel, although more and more uh, people are working in 16 bits per channel. So it's uh, binary, so bits binary, and that just has to do with how, how many shades of a particular color we can have. Um, uh, you know, I'm gonna give you the more uh, deep explanation, even if it makes this a little bit uh, lengthier. Uh, uh, so imagine you have three flashlights. One is red, one is green, one is blue right? And you're pointing at the same point in space, say a white wall or whatever, right? Say at, at nothingness. If you only have on and off switches in these flashlights, you have a one bit color depth. So the lights can be on or off. So boom or nothing, on or nothing. And you have three flashlights. So that's two possibilities per flashlight. That's two plus uh, times two times two. Right, so two times two, four times two, eight. You have the possibilities of eight colors. When you have something that is eight bits per channel, what you mean is that you have a flashlight that has a dimmer with 256 stops because it's two to the eighth power, right? So that's 256. So that's zero all the way up to 255. And because you can have now 256 possibilities of intensity on each one of the flashlights, then you have 256 times 256 times 256, and that gives you the, gives you the possibility of around 17.6 or 0.8, something like that, millions of colors that is possible for you to have in your work. 16 bits per channel, you can just imagine. It's like just an explosion because it's more numbers than my little brain can imagine. And now we're getting into the quadrillions in the, let's not even count those numbers. It's a lot. So the higher the bit depth, the more colors you can represent in your image. That was a long explanation for that, wasn't it? All right. Working color spaces, RGB is what we were talking about. Those are light colors, red, green, and blue. Then you have CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Those are usually ink colors, right? So pigment. One is called additive because when you put all the lights together at its maximum, you get white, right? That would be RGB. And the other one is considered subtractive because when you put all the inks together at their max, 
you get black. In reality, you get a murky brown thing, but let's just say you get black. So one is called additive, the other one is called subtractive. Uh, then you have things like YUV, uh, which is what we use in broadcast television. So that is Luma, chroma blue, chroma red, and uh, uh, that represents the channels, YUV. Then HLS, which is hue, luminance, and saturation. So a color space is a specific organization of colors. It's a useful conceptual tool for understanding the color capabilities of a particular device. The color space of this codec, the color space of this camera can only do, you know, X, Y, or Z. There are different color spaces that we can work and shoot in. And uh, um, the flat log or logarithmic is becoming more and more popular. And the reason for that is because it gives you more uh, stops of luminance. So uh, um, the problem is that our monitors, televisions, etc., are mostly a color space called Rec. 709. That's what you're watching right now. You're watching Rec. 709. And when you put logarithmic inside of Rec. 709, then the colors look flat. It looks kind of like dead, not too contrasty. You know, the colors are like blah, <laughs> blah being a technical term. Um, so usually to take it from flat or logarithmic to Rec. 709, you make use of something called a LUT, which is a lookup table. More on that later. Alrighty, so different color spaces, depending on how you shoot and how you're working, your, the most common ones will be flat or logarithmic, Rec. 709, which is what you're watching right now, or Rec. 2020, which would be like the HDR or high uh, definition range, right? So those would be kind of the most important ones. And yes, After Effects supports all of these color spaces. All right. Let's talk about 1.4c, which is understand and use key terms related to video and audio post. And some of these key terms include, let's just start with editing. E video editing is the manipulation and arrangement of video shots. I mean, we all know what video editing is. Cut what you don't want, put it in the order that you want, boom, you're done. Render it, boom, deliver. So continuing, we have transitions. Uh, video transitions are a post-production technique used in film or video editing to connect one shot to the other. Often, just a cut is used. But I'm sure you've seen Star Wars. You've seen all of those uh, uh, um, films that have different transitions. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, you can do all of those in After Effects or even in Premiere Pro. All right, audio levels, which are measured usually in decibels or dB. And uh, zero in digital would be um, the maximum. So nothing can go past uh, zero. And broadcast uh, quality is going to be like minus 12 uh, or, or broadcast limits. Um, there are other um, broadcast um, institutions that measure in LOFs, LKSF, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the noise floor is going to be the silence. And then the maximum is going to be the, you know, the maximum value in decibels of your audio. Waveforms uh, represent the shape and form of the sound. So it's how you visually see the sound inside of After Effects and in Premiere Pro. Effects. Visual effects, which are sometimes abbreviated as VFX, is the process in which imagery is created or manipulated outside of the context of a live action shot. So it's something that is added in post, the effect, you know, the explosion, the smoke, the whatever it is. The integration of live action footage and other live action footage or CGI or computer graphics uh, images elements to create realistic imagery is called in the industry VFX. And this brings us to the end of this video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.